14 by Alice Gerstenberg. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Mrs. Horace Pringle, read by Christine G. Elaine, read by Francis Brown. Dunham, the Butler, read by Algie Pug. Narrated by Lambda. Scene The dining room of a New York residence. A long table, running from left to right, with a chair at each end and six chairs on each side, is set elaborately for fourteen. Dunham, the butler, is hovering over the table to give it a few finishing touches as Mrs. Pringle comes in. She is a woman of fashion, handsome, and wears a very lovely evening gown. She is rather excitable in temperament, but withal capable and executive, vivacious and humorously charming. She enters in haste carrying a cosage bouquet of flowers and the empty box and paper from which she has unwrapped them. Dunham, I've just had word from Mr. Harper that he was called away to the bedside of a friend who is very ill. He sent me these flowers. It's a good thing he did. I don't approve of young men refusing dinner invitations the very last minute. Dunham, relieving her. Oh, take the box and paper, Mrs. Pringle. Mrs. Pringle, looking at the table anxiously, and then at her watch. It's too bad, after you said it all so beautifully. And it's getting so late. Someone might be coming any moment. How's Cook? Cook's in a temper, as always, madam. I'm glad to hear it. She's like an actress. The better the temper, the better the performance. As long as she serves us a good dinner, I don't care how much she swears. The rest of you can just keep out of her way. Where's Gustav? I'm sorry to have to say it, madam, but there's such an awful blizzard out, he's sweeping off the sidewalk. Oh! dear me yes i should have ordered an awning but who expected a storm like this she glances out of the window elaine a young debutante in evening gown comes running in with a bunch of place cards here are the place cards mother and the diagram shall i put them around yes dear elaine i am going up to look after your father he's so helpless about his ties she starts to leave the room. Remove one plate, Dunham. Remove one plate, madam? Oh, madam, it is a certainty. You wouldn't sit down with thirteen. Thirteen? Why, you'd be right. Thirteen? We can never sit down with thirteen. That's all due to Mr. Harper's negligence. Sick friend, nothing. He's just one of those careless men who never answer their invitations in time. He's flowers indeed to make me forgive him. Now look at the trouble he's put me to. Thirteen? I wonder whom I could get to come in the last minute. Quick, Elaine, help me think. She rushes to the telephone and looks madly through her list of acquaintances. There's always Uncle George. He never opens his head. Mr. Morgan, madam, he always tells a joke or two. Why, yes, Dunham, that's clever of you. Hello, Central, Lakeview 5971. At once, please. Elaine, dear, your hair is much too tight. Pull it out, pull it out. Come here. In telephone. Mr. Morgan's. Well, this is Mrs. Pringle speaking. From across the street. Yes. When Mr. Morgan comes in, please tell him to call me up right away. I want him to dine with us in about ten minutes. You expect him? She pulls Elaine's hair out to make it look fluffier. Elaine makes faces of pain, but her mother pays no attention. Have him call me right away. She hangs up the receiver. Now if he shouldn't get it, then what I'll do? Well, mother, I don't have to be at the table. It's your party, anyway. Everyone's married and older than I am. Mrs. Pringle, 
pointing to the table diagram in Eileen's hand. Didn't I place you next to Oliver Farnsworth? Millions! He's worth millions! Well, he won't be giving me any. Can't he marry you? Aren't you going to try to make a good match for yourself? I fling every eligible man I can at your head. Can't you finish the rest yourself? It's no use, mother. You're trying to marry me off to someone as important as he is. He frightens me to death. I lose my tongue. I'm as afraid of him as I'd be of the Prince of Wales. The Prince of Wales? Oh, what wouldn't I give to have the Prince of Wales in my house? New York has lost its heart to him. I was just telling Mr. Farnsworth yesterday that I'd give anything to have the Prince here. I would establish my social position for life. And I've such a reputation for being a wonderful hostess. The telephone rings. Dear me, the phone. Hello, Mrs. Sedwick. Yes, this is Mrs. Pringle. What? No, oh, caught in a snowdrift. Can't get another car? She puts her hand over the telephone and speaks delightedly to Elaine. Good, the widow can't come. That leaves us twelve. Remove two plates, Dunham. Dunham removes two plates, and Elaine changes the table cards. Mrs. Pringle continues into the telephone. Oh, that's a shame. I'm heartbroken. Oh, my dear, how can we get along without you? But have you really tried? Oh, I'm reduced to tears. Goodbye, dear. She hangs up the receiver and takes it down again. Well, I'm glad she dropped out. Central, give me a lake view 59.71. Dunham, with two less, you can save two cocktails and at least four glasses of champagne. Into the telephone. Has Mr. Morgan come in yet? Well, don't give him the message I telephoned before about crossing the street to Mrs. Pringle's for dinner. It's too late. You understand? She hangs up the receiver. Well, anyway, I've invited Clem, returned my indebtedness, and saved my champagne. Besides... The liquor is getting low, madam. What with prohibition and entertaining so much? Oh, but the mother... If you only have twelve people, father can't sit at the head of the table. But he has to sit at the head. It looks too undignified when the man of the house is pushed to the sides. There's no other way. There must be a woman at each end. How absurd. I always forget. Of course, twelve is an impossible number. She goes around the table looking at the place cards. I don't want to put any of these women at the head. There's Mrs. Darby, such a cat. I wouldn't give her the honour, and Mrs... The telephone rings. Answer it, Dunham. Hello. Mrs. Pringle's residence. A message? Yes, sir. What, sir? Mr. Darby. The doctor says your baby has the chicken pox. Chicken pox? Elaine? Mother. Yes, sir. He hangs up the receiver. Mr. Darby sends his apologies, but owing to the transmutability of the disease, Mr. and Mrs. Darby feel obliged to regret, and also their house guests, Mr. and Mrs. Fleetwood. That's four out. Then you're only eight. Quick, the plate, Stenham. She begins to remove chairs and gathers up silver and plates feverishly. Mrs. Pringle, getting more and more distrait, helps. With so much unaccustomed help, Dunham gets confused and goes through many unnecessary motions. Removes plates, breaks them, drops silver. Aimlessly trying to hurry, his fingers all thumbs. Don't we know someone to invite a last minute? The Hatwoods? They don't serve drinks when they entertain. I can't afford to invite them to drink mine. The Greens? She's not interesting enough. Mr. Conley. He never makes a dinner call, even after all the times I have invited him. Hester Longley. Not at the same table with you and Oliver Farnsworth. She's far too pretty, too clever. Where's our book? 
she runs her finger down the address book the tuppers the tuppers good heavens elaine six in the family that would get us back to fourteen then father could sit at the head of the table well try them i'll rush and tell your father to hold up the drawing-room exit left elaine at the telephone ridgeway nine three two five this is elaine pringle what tupper am i speaking to oh ella hello i hope you haven't finished your dinner we had a party arranged here and the last moment everybody's been dropping out the blizzard can't you flock your family around the corner and eat with us mother and i thought we knew you well enough to call you like this at the seventh hour you would oh fine to dunham six more plates started in the telephone what oh well but she hesitates stutters looks distressed muffles the telephone dunham kid mother quick in the telephone as dunham hurries out of the room yes yes of course love it why certainly yes my dear all right she hangs up the receiver and puts her hand to her head with an ejaculation of dismay great caesar now what have i done mrs pringle rushes in followed by dunham what's the matter elaine what is now i've done it i've just done it but i couldn't get out of it i just couldn't you weren't here i always lose my head and bungle things but what don't keep us waiting like this what is it i invited ella and the family and she accepted and then she said they had two house guests and would it be all right and of course i said it would and now we're sixteen sixteen but madam the table's not that long elaine that's just like you no tact no worldly wisdom but you weren't at the phone you ought to attend such messages yourself you know i always lose my head but the dishes madam and we only have fourteen squabs i won't eat any but i must not be disgraced we'll have to make the best of it and insert another board dunham goes out mrs pringle and helene hurriedly remove part of the cloth but mother i didn't sit at the table mrs pringle pointing to a chair authoritatively you're going to sit right there next to oliver farnsworth now i don't wish to hear another word about it but can't we squeeze them in without all the work of adding another board if i move the plates and chairs closer have you forgotten that mr tupper weighs something like two hundred and fifty pounds and mrs conley has no waistline it can't be done dunham entering with table board cook is in a rage madam she says she is only prepared for fourteen i can't help it she'll have to prepare for sixteen tell her to open cans of soup and vegetables and but the ice cream forms and the gelatine moulds i'll pretend i don't like them and i'll pretend i'm on a diet but i really wouldn't have to be at the table be still she starts as the telephone rings the telephone her hand to her head now what don't answer it it's driving me mad she goes herself as elaine and dunham do not go hello yes this is mrs pringle oh yes jessica what the blizzard you're cold too dangerous she waves to dunham not to put the board in the table dunham elaine and mrs pringle are delighted and relieved but mrs pringle pretends otherwise over the telephone oh jessica you poor dear yes your husband's right it would be foolhardy put on a mustard plaster hot toddy go to bed so sorry she hangs up the receiver there that's wonderful now we are just fourteen but the cards are all wrong only six are coming who were invited originally you'll have to make another diagram how do you want them seated give it to me she reminds at the telephone table where there is a pad and a pencil and makes a new diagram here's some fresh cards she tears up the old cards 
then goes back to help dunham who is having a maddening time with the table what a mess i spent hours over that diagram so much depends upon having guessed seated harmoniously there's the front door bell dunham i told annie to answer it for you but go peek into the drawing-room and tell me who it is as dunham goes out the telephone rings mrs pringle eyes it suspiciously you murderous instrument what have you to say now what hello who mr farnsworth mr oliver farnsworth no you're his secretary he's what instructed you to make his excuses he had to leave for Boston at once on a very important business. Oh! She hangs up the receiver without completing the conversation and hits the telephone in a temper, then rises and paces back and forth in rage. How dare he! How dare he! The last moment like this! No regard for a hostess' feelings! No regard for the efforts she goes to to provide an evening's enjoyment! and such a good dinner i planned and he promised he would come business i don't believe it he didn't want to exert himself was afraid of facing in the blizzard as if he didn't have half a dozen limousines to carry him to the door selfishness downright rudeness and worth millions just a match for you elaine and i was bound you should meet him and sit next to him at the table she tears up his card and now i don't know when i can give you a chance like that again i'm perfectly furious i'll never speak to him again i won't be treated that way perhaps he really did have business and was called away and i one of the most important hostesses in the city people clamouring to receive my invitations all my affairs are a success i insist that they shall be i can't bear any failure i won't have a failure he was my most important guest. He's such a man's man. So important financially. Every other man considers it an honour to meet him. And now not coming. I'm furious. Furious. It's all this damnable blizzard. Now I will have to stay away from the table. His not coming makes us thirteen again. Go to bed. Go off to the nursery. I'll send you milk and crackers. But, Mother, it's not my fault that he had business out of town. Yes, it is. If you'd perk up a bit and not be so timid and make something of yourself, he would hear about your attractions from other men and be curious to meet you himself. Oh, what a family I have! No one to help me with my ambitions. Go to bed. I certainly won't sit down to thirteen. Go to bed. Get out of my sight. Dunham enters from left. It was Mr. Morgan, madam. Mr. Morgan? But I telephoned his maid to tell him not to come. He couldn't have received the second message, madam, for I heard him explaining to Mr. Pringle how happy he was to receive your telephone invitation. That makes you thirteen again, unless you don't want me to go to bed. Of course I don't want you to go to bed. We're back to where we started. Fourteen, Dunham. I'll get the cocktails ready, madam. Annie told me there were several motors making their way through the snow. It's late now, and Cook's swearing about the dinner getting too dry. The telephone rings. Elaine jumps. I won't answer it. I should say not. Hello? What is it? Yes? Yes? Mrs. Tupper! Yes! Mrs. Tupper! But now you must come. We're prepared for you. Yes? Afraid of you. Your daughter told my daughter about your house guests, and we are delighted to have them. But now we're set for you. But every plate is set. But your daughter was quite right. It wasn't an imposition at all. But you must come now. Of course my daughter had authority to invite the guests. Oh, eight isn't at all a big number. There is room. The table is all set. But I beg you. But, my dear, you are not imposing. Oh, but how foolish of you to take that stand. 
why my dear my dear she hangs up the receiver now what do you think of that mrs tupper is perfectly furious at ella for telling you about the house guests and says ella has no tact that nothing would induce her to bring eight when we invited six so she's leaving ella and harry at home only six are coming remove two plates dunham we're twelve after all but if you leave at twelve father can't sit at the end i shall go mad i'll never entertain again never never people ought to know whether they're coming or not but they accept and regret and regret and accept they drive me wild dunham goes out this is my last dinner party my very last a fiasco an utter fiasco a haphazard crowd hurried together when i had planned everything so beautifully now how shall i seat them how shall i seat them if i put mr tupper here and mrs conley there then mrs tupper has to sit next to her husband and if i want mr morgan there oh it's impossible i might as well put their names in a hat and draw them out at random never again i'm through through with society with the parties with friends i wipe my slate clean they'll miss my entertainments they'll wish they had been more considerate after this i'm going to live for myself i'm going to be selfish and hard and unsociable and drink my liquor myself instead of offering it gratis to the whole town i'm through through with men like oliver farnsworth i don't care how rich they are how influential they are how important they are they're nothing without courtesy and consideration business off on train nonsense didn't want to come didn't want to meet a sweet pretty girl didn't want to marry her well he's not good enough for you don't you marry him don't you dare to marry him i won't let you marry him do you hear if you try to elope or anything like that i'd break it off yes i would oliver farnsworth will never get recognition again from me he is beneath my notice i hate oliver farnsworth dunham enters with a note on a silver plate a note from mr farnsworth madam a note from mr farnsworth she takes and opens it yes madam there are two strange gentlemen in the lower hall they presented this letter he said he was the secretary all the other guests are upstairs in the drawing-room madam i counted twelve in all including you and mr pringle and miss elaine but the two gentlemen downstairs madam are waiting for your answer the one gentleman's face looked very familiar madam but i can't just place him although i'm sure i've seen his face somewhere she has been reading the note and is almost fainting with surprise and joy seen his face somewhere oh my goodness elaine it's the prince of wales the secretary said you cut off the telephone or sent to disconnected you he was about to tell you that mr farnsworth knew that the blizzard had prevented his highness from keeping engagement way up town the prince of wales sitting in my lower hall waiting for me to ask him to dinner then we'll be thirteen again there's the secretary miss he is his bodyguard mrs pringle rising to the occasion certainly the secretary elaine we shall be fourteen at dinner serve the cocktails dunham the guests may sit anywhere they choose i shall bring the prince in with me elaine following but mother wasn't it nice of oliver farnsworth to send the prince in his place didn't i always say that oliver farnsworth was the most considerate of men i think i shall like mr farnsworth silly child it's too late now to like mr farnsworth it's time now to like the prince starting out i always managed somehow to be the most successful of hostesses thank god for the blizzard curtain end of fourteen by alice gerstenberg